Hello Charaders, welcome back to another episode on this channel. Hello Charaders, welcome back to another episode on this channel. My name is Debbie. I hope this video meets you all well. I hope you are doing fine. So today we're going to be talking about another interesting topic. Why I decided to do this or talk about this is because one, I have or I studied and lived in Ukraine for like over six years as a student. So um, I kind of have an idea of this i had my own experiences so and also i've had one two people come to me to me and ask okay how did you survive in ukraine what did you do how was it like living in ukraine so well this won't generally be about life in ukraine it will be specifically about how to live on a budget in ukraine because of course money is needed especially when you're a foreigner so there's some things that you can do and if you don't have so much you know if you don't have a fat bank account you just you just try really to you know study to gain a good education and all of that so how can you you know be able to get through this yeah so that's what we're going to be talking, talking about today so if this is what you're interested in keep watching or if you just like you know watching me tell <laughs> keep watching <laughs> so let's get into it but just some things i just want to say about ukraine well ukraine is an eastern european country and um a lot of people, especially a lot of Africans, go to Ukraine to study because they have like good education and um, they have kind of subsidy on education, so it's comparatively cheaper, <laughs> less expensive, you know, in comparison to other um, European countries. So yeah, those are one one of the some of the reasons why people, you know go to Ukraine or Africans mostly go to Ukraine to study. Getting a job as a foreigner is not something that you will easily okay let me use that word easily find to do. Um in comparison with maybe some Western um, countries. Now this is because um it's not officially part of the law in Ukraine to study. They expect that you should have all your um, money to take care of yourself, money for the fees, tuition and all of that. So unlike in the UK where you have the opportunity to work, it's, of, it's official, you know, to get a job, to do, you know, work some hours, to get money, to support yourself and all that. But in Ukraine, it's not that way. So I think, well, I think like it's kind of difficult in a way to get a proper job to do as a student or as a foreigner working, um, studying in Ukraine. So now about um, working in Ukraine, a number of people do um, find jobs to do. Yeah, it's um, just maybe casual jobs you can just get to do to at least support yourself. But it's not like an official thing. I think a good way you can get a job to do is online. If you're working online, maybe teaching English language online or doing some kind of online good legitimate job, that's a way to finance yourself or to get um, to have a source of income. Yeah, if you're studying in Ukraine, that's like a good way. Not only in Ukraine, everywhere, but that's like a way that you can get by if you're working on it. There are a lot of um, online firms or companies that especially want teachers of English to, you know, to be teaching English. So some of them just want you to maybe, if you're good at typing, so you can get some online jobs that will pay you and then you can be able to, you know, survive or keep living. So talking about jobs, um, another way or a good way to get opportunities or to make use of opportunities which usually will come your way is to understand the language either ukrainian or russian understand one of the languages because it helps a lot you know sometimes you can get opportunity to have a job but if you don't understand the language it can be you know a downside for you you can lose that opportunity so understand the language learn the language practice it it will be like an added advantage um, for you yeah so the first thing I want to talk about, aside um, tuition, of course, before you're coming to Ukraine, um, you should have sorted out your tuition somehow. At least just try and make sure that you have a place where tuition will be coming in constantly. Please, you're sure of that to an extent, as much as you can control. And then other things like accommodation, feeding, transportation, all of that, you will see how to work that out. So yeah, the first thing is going to be, aside, aside some tuition, is going to be accommodation. Now, where will you live? Now, putting aside that maybe you have a friend or a relative or it's studying in Ukraine or living in Ukraine, 
let's assume that you don't have anyone that, um, that can provide accommodation for you. Now you have two options basically. It's either you um, stay in the hostel, mostly all the universities have uh, hostels, please that's my knowledge. All the universities have hostels where you can leave and yeah, pretty okay depending on what your taste is. Yeah, or you have opportunities to live in apartments. So usually, um, for the apartment, you can share them with, that's another way to, way to cut money or to cut expenses down. You can share with other students. So we'll say you have another um, student, maybe two of you or three, yeah, as much as you can endure. You can have maybe rent a three room apartment, for instance, if you're three, and each person is gonna have a room to his or herself, and um, you can, the theory you can split the money or the rent monthly as the case may be so that way it's cheaper than living on your own in an apartment now the difference between apartment and hostel is that usually the hostel there are restrictions things that you can do for instance the hostel where i lived initially like there are some appliances um, electrical appliances you couldn't use in the hostel you know because of course you're trying to save on what's called energy electricity and all that so and you usually don't pay bills for hostel to the best of my knowledge you just pay the hostel fee so everything that's contained in that and it's usually of course it's usually cheaper than living in the apartment but of course also you also have your um the positive side or advantages and disadvantages. So one of the, the disadvantages is that in a whole, in, if you're in the hostel, you don't have um, you know, access to be able to do, you know, use any appliances you want to use. You know, some of that can come with an issue with the hostel authorities. So yeah, and then maybe that um, privacy, you may not have so much of privacy because usually you're sharing the room with someone or some people depending on what the situation is yeah but for um but for the advantages is that it's cheaper so personally i feel like it's a good way to start like if you just come into the country and you don't have any other options you know i think it's best to start with the hostel just live in the hostel you save some money and be able to get used to the environment and get used to your schedule also before you can move out to an apartment if you intend moving to an apartment so yeah, hostels also are all degrees, you know, some hostels are, mm -mm, and some hostels are pretty okay. So of course the money is also going to affect which, um, the money also rather, you know, influences, yeah, what kind of hostel it is. So that's the about accommodation. So if you want the privacy, you want the liberty and the luxury of staying on your own, or living in an apartment then you can to be able to cut down expenses you can decide to share with someone and look for apartment style you know they are also great of apartment they are the luxury apartments you know of course you pay more money and then they are the very basic apartments and you still you know have a reasonable price for that so you can also try and see how you can go for what is affordable what is within your budget you get so you may not have everything in it but at least you have something decent and then you can be able to save some money up for other things so that's another thing and then concerning accommodation one good thing i really personally appreciate about the accommodation in ukraine is that most times the apartments so it's the best of my knowledge they always come with their um amenities, amenities. they always furnished furnished apartments so you have your microwave you have um your beddings in the room most times you have a um, refrigerator washing machines you know all that jazz and the apartment already so it's like really really economical so you don't even have to buy any extra things well like when you're in the um, hostels these hostels I well the hostel I lived in they didn't have a refrigerator so you have to buy your refrigerator that's another thing if you're staying in a hostel or in a room the roommates can decide to put money together and buy some appliances like refrigerator or like a cooker though there's a kitchen and the kitchen will have cooker but usually because it's a public place you may not really enjoy all of that so yeah if that can work you can also do that but i think feel like the freedom and the benefits of living in an apartment is the reason why a lot of people prefer living in their apartment of course it has its own challenges landlord challenges and all that but yeah, you can get through it. Anyway. So that's one way to cut down on the expenses when you're living in Ukraine. Another thing is feeding. 
see, my dear, I think it's very much more economical to cook your meals and, um, yeah, cook your meals. You spend less and then you eat healthy also. There are a lot of fresh food stores. Go to the open market, look for the open market in your city. Like, <laughs> don't just stick to the supermarket, metro or caravan or um, Silpo or Atebe. Don't just stick to those big ones. Like, go to the open market, you get fresh food there, and you get them at reasonable prices. You can, you know, get good quantities also. So, that way, and it's a good thing there's <laughs> electricity. So, usually, what I do is uh, if during the weekend I just make my food these two very good eggs in bowl and then keep it in your refrigerator so once once you do that you're good at least for the week or at least for the few um the first few days of the week you know okay you have something to eat so you save time you don't you also save um what's it called electricity or gas whatever you're using to cook instead of cooking every day and spending more money because if you're living on your own you're going to be paying your bills, the house bills, or I didn't even talk about that during accommodation, you're gonna pay bills. So you put out put that also. It's not just the rent you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay bills also. So um you put that in mind. Yeah, so when you're if you if you're able to cook at once that way during the weekend for instance, you can just keep it in the refrigerator and then that way you save the money on um, gas cooker or electricity depending on what the situation is. And then you're able to, all you just have to do is like heat, heat up your food maybe during the day. And then you also save up on time. Like you can really concentrate on your studies and concentrate on other things you get. So I feel like it's good to cook your meals yourself. And then you can also be sure what you're eating, you're eating healthy, and then you can save up some money. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is transportation. Now, it's a good thing that um, transportation is um, subsidized. <laughs> That's the right word, but yeah, transportation is in Ukraine for students is really like um, way cheaper because usually you always have a um, student discount, especially when you have a student card, which usually your school would give you. So, for instance, if you're having a train ride, like you use most times you use train from cities to cities, from a city to another city, yeah, around the country. So you have a like discount on it. And then also for a metro, like underground subway system, I think it's subway, we call it metro, I don't know, I don't know. underground train, whatever, I will write the correct thing there. <laughs> so yeah, but we, you usually have a discount, also students um, discount. So that's really, really helpful because it cuts down on your expenses. And then instead of and getting a taxi from here to here, just try and use the bus. Yeah, they're also buses, they're also cheaper. And also some of the buses also come with students discount. So you save a lot of money. And short distances where you can walk, my dear, just carry your legs and walk. <laughs> because it's also a way of um, doing exercise. You don't have time to go to the gym or you don't have money for a gym subscri subscription. You can also, you know, um, what's the word? You can also use that as your own exercise. You know, stay healthy and fit, enjoy fresh air, and save some money. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> See, life is about perspective, how you see it. So, that's it. So, yeah, that's that about transportation. Another thing to do if you're on a budget, not just if you're on a budget, regardless of whether you're on a budget or not, or not is to save. See, as you're cutting on expenses on, on where you can, it's important that you try to save. Save up some money, no matter how small a day you may say, oh, it's not even enough. Regardless, even if it's not enough, no matter how small it is, just drop something. Let it become a habit that even when you now have enough, you'll still be able to keep that habit up and also they say the drops of water make a mighty ocean so regardless of how much you have you can just say just see it as something you have to do so even if it's the smallest currency just save something over time you see when you, when it piles up or when it accumulates it will be up to something <laughs> I remember because they usually use coins at least while well, in Ukraine they use on coins so we'll call it kopiok so 
most times you see people throwing your clip here go away oh it's not important it's like the smallest um, currency or denomination and all of that but my dear i usually do give you those copies a lot in the supermarkets if as change so you have the tendency to just throw it away but just try to get your copiox, have a small pack and just be dropping those copiox inside. But once you feel like you don't need, oh, it's just 25 copiox, I don't need it. Oh, it's just, you know, um, what are 50 copiox, I don't need it. Just keep dropping them. Because one interesting thing is when you go to the supermarket and they tell you it's, you have like 50 copiox, um, copiox, copiox left to complete your bill most times so though sometimes they'll let you but it's really rare they will collect their copy of so it's important you keep don't think it's small money just get that pack and keep accumulating it go over over maybe like a month later go see count how much is there you know that it's some amount of money so just try and have that saving habit you know just things can help you um like you know, another thing i want to talk about is shopping like every student in Ukraine knows where to get things on sales. <laughs> it's like, it's almost like a, I don't know, maybe a student code, like everywhere. Oh, they're on sale, they're on sales in the shop. Oh, they're on sales there. Her ATV is on sales. Oh, um, what's the carry is on sales. I don't even know if carry still exists. Before I left Ukraine, carry was no more in my city. So, oh, still so put it on sales for anything. It may be groceries, it can be shoes, it can be bags, it can be clothes. Oh, papaya is on sale. Oh, this is on sale. Like, it's just that's the way to go, my dear. <laughs> because usually, um, they, most of the shops, especially the big ones, will go on sales. Sales where they um, have discounts on their items. So, maybe for instance, a an item that you will get normally or usually the, or before maybe the item was on say a certain price by the time you're on sales it can be like half the price it was on before sometimes even 75 percent lesser or 75 percent discount on the price it was before so sometimes it's a good way to also save some money so one trick <laughs> oh, I, I, I discovered rather is that usually um the companies of the brands will go on sales when a season is going okay there are, there are four seasons in let me use ukraine because that's what we're talking about in ukraine so there's winter there's um there's winter there is spring after <laughs> yes <laughs> there's winter there's spring there's some um, summer and there's autumn so for instance if we're in winter Winter officially, I think, starts somewhere around December. I think December, January, February, officially winter. So, anyway, so um, if the season is winter, at the beginning of winter, items or clothing items for winter will be pretty expensive. But by towards the end of winter, you see them like on sales really cheap. So, what most times one can do is that during that season, when the season is phasing out and the items are going, you know, on sales and they're cheap, just go and buy those things during that season. When you get them, keep them over for the next season because by the next winter, while you're entering winter, you need those items. They will be expensive at that time because, of course, it's on demand then. But by the, um, towards the end of that season, the demand is reducing and because the companies also want to clear out the uh, old stock, the stock for the, um, the outgoing season, I don't know, stock for the season that they are leaving and they want to restock for the new season, like maybe um, spring, for instance. so they want to bring spring items in, so they'll have to get rid of the winter stocks, so they put it at a very like much lower or lesser price than it was initially so that's a good time to get you if you're in a budget if you're not on a budget you probably have all the money to get in there at the beginning of the season so it doesn't change anything for you but if you're in a budget my sister my brother you can just get those things during that period and then you can save it all for the next um so, so that's one trick don't tell them i told you anyways so yeah so we really look even in grocery and the supermarket like groceries for groceries also you can get things in on sales 
sometimes it may be because maybe the stuff is about to expire anyway so just check that to be sure that it's something you can use before the expiry date so uh, also during shopping also i advise that you invest in quality yes it can be expensive but i feel like over time it's cheaper if you get something that it's the quality is good i can remember two items i got excuse me two, these two items they lasted like <laughs> throughout my whole period in ukraine like seriously because over time it's cheaper yeah some people have an issue with maybe using things for a long time they want to dispose it and all that but what i'm saying is, is that i realized that quality is cheaper over time it may be expensive when you get them one of the items where my pot i got this set of like really pretty pots and they were kind of expensive at the time because i just got into ukraine i guess if i had stayed in ukraine for some time maybe i would have gotten those pots initially because then i just came in so you know we had money she just brought us into the game came brought us in with money so i just bought these three stamps this pot this um set of pots at once like that but i realized that it was worth it because i never got any other pot throughout my stay in ukraine and i even passed those pots on to another student when I was living in Ukraine. So it was worth the investment at the time. Because it was just enough and it lasted well. It was quality, it lasted well for me. So that's another way to save money. Invest in quality. It may be expensive, but it's cheaper on the long run. Because another thing is a shoe. It was a winter shoe. I had just come to this place where I was supposed to step like they transferred. And I just went to the open market and I got this like really nice shoe, winter shoe. And it was kind of expensive thing too, you okay? get. But I used that shoe from my first year down to the final year. Like, <laughs> it was, and the interesting thing is that I got all the winter shoes after I got that one. But they didn't last as long as the, this one I got. As long as I was, I used used it but it was just surprise, surprising that the other ones didn't last as long as this one because quality is you know it's cheap in the long run so yeah you may not be the kind of person that uses things for a long time anyways but yeah i just feel like it's worth it when you get it and then um if you also on a budget and so how to buy or you know you can just use and i knew i wasn't going to stay there forever so Anyways, I would have changed it in times, but it, what I'm just trying to say that it lasts really well. So sometimes it's just best to invest in the quality stuff so you can use them well and enjoy it. Because I'm glad I was able to pass it over, pass the pot over to someone, someone else who will find it useful too. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's that about that. Another thing I want to say is constantly jobs. You can also find something for doing that very important one of the ways that a lot of foreign students survive in Ukraine is to look for something to do look for maybe it can be a skill you know if you haven't left your country and you're still in your country you're planning on going to stay abroad find a skill or sorry acquire a skill get something it can be making hair like hairstylist it can be fashion design it can be um, what's it called catering like baking and all that it can be maybe some IT stuff, it can be artwork and all this. Something that you photography also is another big thing that people do also to you, be able to survive and support themselves. So it's very important to get something doing. And if you don't have anything to be married with someone that knows you can work for someone that has something to do, just a way to get you know, some money. And also online so you can start a blog or something that's also gonna help you, you know, get um, an income or have a source of income. So it's very important. Yeah, there's also one interesting thing that can affect this whole budget ish is that the count the city where you're staying or where you're studying at really can influence these things because um expenses or standard of living differs a bit from city to city within the country so for instance if you're living like in the far west or western part of the country sometimes it's not as expensive 
compared to you, maybe the eastern part of the country. No, really, it, it's not really about the west or the or east or whatever. It's really about the city where you're staying. For instance, housing in, let me say, even Frank is where I study, where I study, yeah, is not as expensive as in bigger cities like Kharkov or Kiev. So these are things you should also put in mind while choosing a place to um, study, especially when you're on a budget. Well, another thing is that opportunities, maybe for instance for job, as they are more in bigger cities like Kiev than they are in smaller cities. So just kind of try and weigh your options and choose. So they know what's, um, what's workable within where you're studying or the city where you're studying so that you, know, you can be able to find find a balance or be able to get something out of it so thank you so much for coming this far with me i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was helpful i hope you learned one or two things from it yeah so i want you to be encouraged that um, life is never perfect you get people with healthy challenges and all that and really it's the people who determine to go head on regardless of the uncertainties that really get the best you know from life so you may not have everything figured out but at least you have some things you know that you can start with keep going and god will bless your way so thank you so much it was fun doing this um i pray that you stay blessed and i pray that you get the best out of whatever season out of whatever situation you find yourself in so if you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below, share with friends, tell others so that they can learn also. And please don't forget to subscribe and join the family. <laughs> All right, till next time, I'm Debbie. Bye.